Cheap little Famiclone devices have always fascinated me. My first exposure to the Nintendo Entertainment System as a child was with one of those PowerJoy plug-and-play devices that were commonly found at mall kiosks. While I was out and about the other day, I stumbled upon this Tech Solutions classic arcade handheld game system at 5 Below of all places. This handheld device was in the $5 plus section and ended up costing me about $10 before tax. I thought it'd be fun to do a little unboxing of this Game Boy type device and some first-hand impressions to see what types of games it offers and to see if it's truly worth the $10 that I paid. Let's do this! This is the classic arcade from 5 Below. Enjoy 400 classic games in a compact and lightweight design. Choose from retro arcade games, puzzles, shooting, blah, blah, blah. Likely all unlicensed. These graphics look way too good. Definitely some false advertising here. Tisk tisk. All right, let's get this bad boy opened. Mmm, smells of cheap Chinese plastic. Why is that smell so strong? And of course, there's a loose battery. What a great sign. So the actual handheld itself feels incredibly cheap. The buttons are stiffer than a shot of Taller Mordu, yet somehow manage to squish with little to no resistance. I can tell where this is going. On the plus side, this little guy looks kind of like an original DMG Game Boy, but obviously a lot smaller and cheaper. It comes with a rechargeable cell phone battery. Gross. An AV cable, which will be useful especially for this video, providing this thing actually works. An instruction booklet, which is neither informative or entertaining. And the small micro USB cables. And that's pretty much it. Let's just go ahead and throw the battery in and hope that this thing actually works. Moment of truth. She lives! But wow, is that little speaker really, really tinny sounding. And super wide screen my this f is 4x3. Yeah, I'm not gonna make you guys watch the rest of this video through this tiny little screen. I'm just gonna go ahead and hook it up through the provided AV cables so we can get a better view of this little f I'm gonna try to showcase a mixture of presumably original titles as well as classics that we all know and love. So let's just go ahead and get out of this damn menu. Twin Fish. My god, that music. That music is something. Twin Fish is a pretty basic matching game that sees players pairing the moving fish with the tiles of fish. The game itself doesn't actually keep score, and it just continues to reset itself regardless of if you win or lose. We're only on the first title, and I can already tell this is gonna go swimmingly. Next up we have Miss Pac-Man, which is arguably the better Pac-Man game. Namco seems to be trying to wipe her from existence in recent years, so I'm glad it's on this little bootleg. It's very clear that this is the NES version of Miss Pac-Man, which is inferior to the arcade release, but it's really not a bad port. Miss Pac-Man is probably the perfect game to test out the D-pad with, and let's just say it's underwhelming. I keep pressing down on the D-pad and Miss Pac-Man won't go down. Now I see why you've been replaced. But seriously, it's no fault of the game. It's simply a poorly designed D-pad that isn't as responsive as it should be. Octopus. Maybe it's a port of the Game & Watch title. Well, I'm bummed. So what's not a port of the Game & Watch masterpiece is actually some collectathon that sees some Little Mermaid ripoff. Oh, Isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think my collection's Swimming around, avoiding an octopus, and what looks to be a seal. The goal is to collect gems, which unlock what can be assumed to be King Triton's trident. The collision detection in this game when trying to get onto the little ramps, combined with the inconsistent D-pad, is nerve-wracking and take any enjoyment this game would have and completely sink it. Next up, we have a lesser-known classic, Flip Pull. This fun little puzzle game sees our little potato person throwing tiles at matching tiles to then pick up the tile underneath, rinse and repeat. This series is a lot more popular in Japan, so naturally this is the Famicom release, which we never saw in the States. I guess other countries just didn't have time for this little guy. Rest in peace. Those looking to try Flip Pull out can actually purchase the arcade port on the Nintendo Switch eShop, which I would highly recommend. This one's called Candy Workshop. Looks like we're gonna be playing as a bear, presumably in a candy workshop? Oh god, that's not a bear. What the f did they do to you? Smack you with the fugly stick? This poor Space Jam 2 alien reject is forced to pick up various pieces of candy and drop them onto the conveyor belt and pack them up for shipment. All while the other candies and boxes are just continuing to be flung at the ugly b Sorry, buddy, even the workshop doesn't like ya. I'll be honest, I wouldn't want to eat anything that monstrosity touches. 
What's a panda? What the f are you? Next, we've got Panzer Fly Car. Wow, they didn't waste any time with that title screen, did they? This is just a reskinned ROM hack of Konami's NES port of Road Fighter. Panzer Fly Car is actually included in quite a few of these little bootleg devices, and I still don't understand why. This reskin takes the cars and the racetrack and replaces it with a darker road and fly cars? Quadcopters? I don't know anymore. All I do know is that it's a major step down. Well, Octopus might not have been a Game & Watch port, but Bomb Sweeper sure is. And actually, it's a fairly well-known homebrew NES port that was released as freeware back in 2002. The game plays pretty similar to the LCD original, and it's actually pretty well suited for a device like this since it's very easy to pick up and play in short spurts. Okay, Rural Goblin. This is just some <laughs> whack-a-mole knockoff. There is a timer, but it doesn't count down, it counts up. I guess the developers just wanted to time how long you actually spent torturing yourself. There is apparently an objective, since by repeatedly spamming down on the D-pad and X on the controller, I somehow managed to clear the first level. Something tells me I'd be having more fun with the city goblins. Diamond. It's just a poorly developed brickout clone with horrible slowdown to paddle movement while the ball is breaking bricks. You might be wondering why it's called Diamond. Well, power-ups drop in the form of a diamond. Each stage has a designated goal that must be reached by the ball. And that's it. If it wasn't for the slowdown, this might actually be fun. But why would anyone want to play this when Arkanoid is actually included on the same device? And yet, here I am. Fruit Pig. Play as a pig and collect fruit. Pretty self-explanatory, and also pretty lame. Something that's not lame? Tetris. Included is what appears to be the Tengen release, which many see as the superior NES port of Tetris. Not that it really matters, since this thing's D-pad is still very iffy and only works when it wants to. Hexapod New. Where's Hexapod Old? There's absolutely nothing new feeling about Hexapod New. It plays like it belongs on an old Atari 2600. The game was allegedly developed in 2004, but had you told me 1974, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm underwhelmed to say the least. And why is it called Hexapod New? This is probably one of the most primitive games on the handheld. The closest game I've found so far on this little bugger that resembles that Mario-looking image on the box is Jumping Kid, another Famicom exclusive. Jumping Kid sees you play as some boy playing leapfrog with a bunch of frogs, dogs, elephants, and whatever the hell else you can assume would escape a circus or a zoo. Jumping Kid almost reminds me of a cross between Adventure Island and Circus Charlie, which are both on here, might I add, and would probably be more worth your time. I do not, this next one is art. Hey, at least they were upfront about this game being because it definitely is. Gold star for accurate naming. I mean, come on. The rocks even sort of resemble poop. I think it's a mistranslation of grass art since you play as a man cutting grass, but art is definitely more appropriate. The game literally ends after a short time, taking you back to the title screen. I've taken dumps longer than it takes to beat this one, and I'm sure you have too. The world of bootleg NES adaptations of mobile games are plentiful, and one of the more common is Angry Birds. This is an NES demake of Angry Birds, which in itself was a knockoff of the mobile game Crush the Castle. It's kind of like bootlegception. It runs like a clucking though, so unless you're stuck in the year 2010 and have some sort of obsession with these birds, this Ravio ripoff is best avoided. But if you insist, there is another Angry Birds game. Angry Bird 3, which isn't actually an Angry Birds game, but instead a ROM hack of a 2D platformer I swear I used to know the name of. If you know, let me know in the doobly-doo. Hey, there's actually a Mario game on here. Wrecking Crew, one of Mario's lesser known titles. Wrecking Crew sees Mario switching job careers to a demolition specialist, with a goal to destroy the blocks and doorways in your path while avoiding enemy contact. In my opinion, Wrecking Crew is an underappreciated NES gem that should be enjoyed by more retro enthusiasts. Hammer and Nail. It's about as riveting as it sounds. Smack the sentient nails with your sentient hammer and question your existence. IQ Champion. I guess let's see how smart I am. Wait a minute. This isn't an IQ tester. It's just some shooter. Wait, maybe it is an IQ tester. Are you smart enough to leave before the next level? Why, yes. Yes, I am. Pikachu. Not to be confused with the Pokemon Company and Nintendo's very own Pikachu. See, this guy's totally different. He likes Tetris. This was a nice surprise, since I love me some Tetris, but it was quickly ruined by its slippery, loose controls. If you're like me and you insist on playing Tetris on this device, I would just recommend sticking with the Tengen release. The next title, Get Eggs, sees a robot getting eggs. 
As they land, he learns something new about the world. Like that there's apples. Maybe this is some post-apocalyptic game about robots trying to rebuild society. See, they're learning. I guess you could call this an educational game? Wait, what the f*** is a bleb? Huh, guess I learned something. So what are my overall thoughts on the classic arcade handheld? It's a little device that is maybe 100 good games, and the rest are comprised of bootlegs, homebrew, and shoddily made unlicensed disasters. Using the actual device leaves a lot to be desired. The onboard screen's resolution is bad, the speakers are worse, and the D-pad makes me wish I was Amish. A game collector, like myself, has multiple other options to play most of these games, like more contemporary consoles or actual retro hardware. $10 is a small price to pay for quite a few classics, and I guess this could be a fun way to discover newly found retro games to eventually purchase for collection purposes. I could also see this being useful for someone who travels. Just consider it a little disposable game system. At the most, I would say I could recommend this to a kid or somebody new to gaming. It's a fairly inexpensive way to introduce someone to retro NES classics. Otherwise, if you're looking for a daily driver, I'd recommend saving your money and purchasing something a little bit higher quality. Hey guys, thanks for watching. This video took a lot longer than I expected it to due to some personal issues, but I'm back and I'm ready to make more content. Let me know what you think about this style of video and if you'd like to see more of them in the future. Until next time, peace.